Hi, this is Andre again. Today, the update of Gecko S2 release 2.2. And the major feature is we have a new supported platform. So for all about that, stay tuned. Today, I'm going to show you um, what is new in Gecko S 2.2, the newest release from this week. And one of the major points is we get a new platform. We now support the Commodore 128. And I'll show you a demo of that um, later. So what is Gecko S anyway? Gecko S is a preemptive multitasking operating system for 6502 processes. Um, it provides virtual consoles, signals, semaphores, backgrounding, redirection, piping, environment variables, standard library, it's using the cross assembler XA and it uses uh, dynamic linking using the 065 uh, relocatable file format. And you can watch the introduction on that link that, is, that I provide here and in the description below. So Gecko S 2.1 uh, supported these four platforms, which is my self-built uh, Commodore PET clone, which is a Commodore 64, which is a um, 32K PET, um, either with the small screen, 3032 or 4032, uh, with the larger screen, uh, all supported, and especially the 8296 or even the 8096, uh, which has uh, 96 kilobyte of RAM available compared to the 32K of this one. So this is actually the preferred platform right now. But in 2.2, we get support for the Commodore 128. And we not even uh, only get support for the 128, but we also get support for the 1571. That includes uh, support for the fast serial code. So we can run Gecko S in two megahertz in the 128 and use the fast serial bus on the 1571. So, other features in 2.2, the terminal code has been, or console code has been overhauled. Now there's support for colors, for attributes, and especially there's support for the um, video display controller chip of the Commodore 128, which is uh, some, somewhat peculiar, but yeah, well, anyway. Now there's a SwiftLink RS-232 support in Commodore 64. It should be working in the 128 as well, but I haven't tested it yet. Um, it's using non-maskable interrupts for faster data transfer. So there's no more hassle uh, trying to get the user port 9600 baud uh, interface working on the VICE emulator, for example. You can use uh, the SwiftLink support in the VICE emulator and uh, check out the um, internet support, internet capabilities of Gecko S using this serial line support. The shell has job control, um, so you can do some backgrounding of uh, processes and putting them in the foreground again and so on. And you now have uh, uh, some much more information on the uh, PS command that also shows you uh, threat information. You can see a full list of uh, the uh, updates in 2.2 on this uh, link, which is the link to the uh, GitHub issue list. So I'm starting Gecko S on the 8296 port here. Um, let me show you the uh, job control features. So you can, for example, try to, add, just as an, as an example, uh, hex dump your LS output. And uh, then you can use the control Z key to put that stuff into, to, to suspend this foreground process. Um, so you can see it here. You can see the two processes uh, that have uh, put into the background. One is actually stop, which is the 
ls key which is the first of the pipe and then you see also see the hex dump program which is running in the background uh, but is still active uh, but it's not getting any any data so there's nothing to see here so i can uh, put it in the foreground and nothing happens because it doesn't get any information but you can do control set again uh, now what i have here now i have stopped the hex dump which was that was the one that was in the foreground so i'm putting the hex dump back into the background and then i'm putting ls active into the background i see the shell is there but you can see that the disk activity is going on and uh, there is actually you can see that the, the shell and the background process are outputting at the same time so both are active at uh, at this time and there are no more drops because they both have terminated so that's how job control works it's an experimental feature there are some kind of quirks that still need to be ironed out in a later revision but uh, I think that that's it for for the starters. So this is my Commodore 128 setup. You can see the flat 128 here. You can see the 1571 disk drive here, which is set to unit number eight. And this is the XS 1541, an old device for serial communication to the PC via the USB cable attached here. This is all set to 80 column screen. So we have uh, we have the VDC output and I can show you this is the <laughs> the, the the file on the PC and I prepared a Gecko's 128 D64 file uh, disk image file I um, I had to rename it because the software automatically, server software automatically creates a directory to go into if it's called D64. But, uh, and then I use the AM util, uh, which you can see in a minute, um, to copy the Gecko's operating system to the disk that is in, in this drive. So you can see here the AM util program here. So let's start GeckOS. The loader and we boot it. Now GeckOS has, is booting and it has already started the init process, the device file system, the IEC file system, and is loading the shell from. Uh, from the disk as you have seen here on, on the disk drive. So if you look at the system configuration, um, it's uh, Gecko's 2.2, the better one will, will be removed. Um, so that's the version that gets the official Commodore 128 support. So how much memory do we have? Um, so you can see here that uh, we have quite a lot of memory. There's 16, uh, there's 8K on the bottom and there's uh, 7K on the top, which are used for uh, the kernel IO. Oh, actually the IO is hidden, but the kernel and the, the library and, and the shared memory and the rest of the the memory can be used for your own for your own programs and there are actually two environments um, and one environment because the Commodore 128 has two banks um, all the system programs are running in environment you look at the column en here environment is all zero except for the even the shell that started from the init process is running in the system memory and only the PS program is running as, you've can, as you have seen here. There's only one process, there's no shell in the memory map. Um, so that's taken out of the way 
only the PS program is running on uh, the user space. And the user space does not have access to I.O. And, and, and has all the memory for itself. Unfortunately, my setup does not have color. And you can also see that uh, the console actually does have color. It's just not displayed here. And this is a small test program. You press the keys. So you can see, you can, you can check out that all the features are working. And all, all those are colored usually. And then you can see if they are moved appropriately when there's shifts and, and then scrolls going on. So, and what you can see here is there's a window definition. And now we are in direct mode. All the all the all the uh, keyboard input goes to the program to the shell, and then is uh, only our output is printed on on the screen. But we can also go to using the um, control Commodore key. Now we can move like in a full screen, but inside the window. But what you can do here is you can use the control key and the home key and then you disable the uh, window definition. Also you can use control, um, control cursor down to create the upper left border and control cursor right to define the lower right border and then you have a new window definition. Okay, and then you can control Commodore key goes back into normal direct mode where you can, where the shell has to do all the other stuff, <clears throat> all the screen editing itself. How, how do I know that I'm actually using the fast serial in interface here? That is because in this version I have injected uh, code to change the border color on the VIC. Therefore I have to switch over, you can see the border color is changing, which means um, for every byte. And you can see it's two megahertz because Vic is not displaying anything. Uh, let me switch back to the other display. Uh, you can see we have a fast serial bus and you have the two megahertz mode. So that's the Commodore 128 port. port. Hope you like it. So that's it for today. I hope I've given you a good overview on GeckoS 2.2. Stay tuned and see you next time.